Broadway feeling in forever. Hey, that's um, that was longer than my intro, actually. By the way. <laughs> No, time now to introduce a man who made 79 appearances for Chelsea, scoring 11 goals. More importantly, he was the first ever black player to play for Chelsea. He's the subject of a documentary, uh, the author of a book. Uh, it really is just an honour ha to have him on the show. Please welcome Paul Canneville, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. First of all, Paul, how much in percentage did you write of that book? I, I would have thought... The whole lot. Really? Um, no, so um, yeah. I've got to give um, thank you for Rick Glanville for helping me. Uh -huh. um, I wanted it told how I said it, and uh, that's what he did. He done a great job, and I think that's the reason why people relate with it. It is an incredible book. It, it truly is. is an amazing book. And Paul, unlike you, um, I've read it. And... <laughs> <laughs> no, he's right. <laughs> I've never read it. He's right. I've well, never read it. It's a cracking read. Thank you. Uh, and I will just start at the start, though, by saying your debut for Chelsea in 1981. What was it like? Ooh. Um, that's a very, very good question. Come on. Well, I, I don't ask many of them. <laughs> <laughs> it was no, it was good. Don't get me wrong. Um, nice thing we went off. Good. So it's Selhurst Park and, and running the line there waiting to go on? Don't get me wrong. It's, it's supposed to be one of the best times of my life. Um, and I've been waiting for it to break into the first team and sort of... So when I was given that shout, it was just, yeah, you phone your friends, you want to be there to give you support. Um, and then waiting for the game to start and sitting on the sidelines and taking in the atmosphere, and it was great. And then you start looking at the individual player that I think I'm going to take on, and you look at him and think, oh, man, if I get on, I'm going to roast him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're looking at him and then, yeah, and then the game goes on, it's half-time and it's nil-nil, and you think, yeah, second half, he's got to put me on. So after 10 minutes and 20 minutes of the second half, you're looking at it, it's still near now, and I'm looking at the manager and I'm making all kind of noises. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, yeah, you know I'm here. And, you know what I mean? And then I got the shout, and you don't know when you got that shout, Canners, what? Get warmed up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, and, you know, that was it when it came about, the surprise, and I started warming up, my back was against the fans. And then I started to hear this racism shouting at me, and I'm, I thought, well, that's Crystal Palace fans just trying to put me off. Nah, I'm not having it. No, I'm ignoring it. But it continued, and it got louder, and it got worse, and they weren't saying some nice words, and I was getting angry, and I'm thinking, why? Nobody said nothing. And that's when I turned around and got the surprise. It was my own fans. And really? Went, wow. And before I knew it, whoa, you don't even know me, kind of thing. Hold on. Because of the colour of my skin, you're telling me you're not supporting me? And that was hard to take. Because you, you played in Nero in the early 80s when that sort of hooliganism on the terraces was pretty intense and I guess it was the Chelsea, the headhunters was the, sort of the crew that was known and infamous. Mm. So did you know about what to expect when you arrived at Chelsea, that you might be subjected to that? Well, this is the thing. I didn't know any of the history at Chelsea. Um, I didn't know about headhunters. I didn't even know they had natural front supporters following them. Um, all I knew is that when we were at games, we didn't have much of a crowd, so we were playing much of the reserve games and behind quiet doors. Um, breaking in that first team, it was a case after that, um, literally, that I hid under caps, making my way to the ground on the full and bold way, coming to the ground, giving leaflets from the National Front and realising I am black. But um, then it was after the games, I wouldn't even go home straight away. I'd let it calm down, so it took me three hours by the time I went home. So it was kind of frightening at times. You write in the book just a little bit about what it was like at Stanford Bridge at the time. Now, we look at it on the tally now. It's a beautiful stadium. It's a, it's a boutique stadium. It's one of the great stadiums in the world. Those who remember it, it was a pretty tough place back then and how you used to warm up in the loneliest part of the ground and try to get away from it. Tell people about that. You see, when I warmed up, see how it is now, the dugout is on the, we used to be on the right-hand side of the entrance tunnel, we say, and ref, well, manager used to say, come, let's go and warm up. So, believe me, when I took to the right, which would be the East stand, it those notorious fans, and I want to say minority of fans that were there, gave me the same abuse every time. Now, when I warmed up, you went towards uh, Matthew Hardy went behind the goal. And I literally took my time and warmed up and literally, purposely took my time where I could see the managers and they was calling me and I ignored them. 
because I didn't want to go back. You played 80 odd games. Did you? Did was there any change, noticeable change over that time or that you were there, or was it difficult from go to woe? It, as I said, it, was, it took two and a half years until it eased up, and especially when, when it did, it was against the Sheffield Wednesday kind of quarter final. Uh, we call it when at that time Milk Cup um, against Sheffield Wednesday, where I changed it. Um, we was losing three 0 down, and second half came on, scored in eleven seconds, and scored the fourth goal where it was a four all draw. From then, the support was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know because when we played at home. And it's funny because I remember this game and we was playing against um, Watford, the likes of Luther Blissett and yeah, yeah. Barnes. Yeah. And I remember there was a tackle I gave Luther Blissett and I don't usually tackle, but when I tackled <laughs> him, I took him and ball straight out. It was like, whoosh. Right. And then, they, you know about the shed, they started calling my name. Huh? Cannonville, Cannonville. I said, my gosh, wait, they're calling my name. So that was half time and I went into the change room and the boys said, Cannons, you're one of us now. And I had to tell him, but I've always been one of you. Mm. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? That was something to take. I've got to ask you too, did you, you're considered a pioneer now, uh, Paul, but did you, at the time, did you think that? The way you said that, it, it said it at pioneer. I didn't know, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm quite helpful. No, you know I what? struggle with English. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to was tell that, you that early. Well, after reading the book? Yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm better now, I'm better now. There you go. Um, you know what, I didn't even look for that. I didn't think about being pioneer, even when they called me a being a legend. I didn't, I don't understand that, to be honest. All I wanted to be was a professional. Um, I didn't realise being the first black player, I didn't take that in at all. It was just a young boy following his dream, and if I made it easier for the likes of other black kids to come through, then that's great. Um, what I do now is what I consider great is um, MTC, the my foundation Motivate to Change, where disadvantaged kids that I provide a little, you know, motivation, inspire them about their education, how important that is these days, because they need it, because I lacked in it. There aren't many black managers in football. I mean, John Barnes has talked about how he mm -hmm. struggled to get a job uh, in recent years. There's an article this, uh, this today. I think there was an article today about John mm -hmm. Barnes. Talking about it. Sol Campbell's talked about it in the past. Chris Hutton's the only one really at the yeah. moment at that level. Do you think that there's still institutional racism in the game that, that, that denies uh, you know, a well-credentialed black former player or coach from having a role? Difficult. Difficult answer. And uh, we can't put our f uh, finger on it, to be honest. Um, whether they say that we haven't got the credentials is another thing. Whether we're being looked at for the position, that's another. Um, yes, the top people at the top have to look at it. Um, and only then will they understand why we're getting upset about it, why we're not getting positions when we think we should. Um, you know what I mean? Until then, that's really more I can say about that. Um, it's funny, there's, there's always stories that come out. In fact, I think there was a story today about those Chelsea supporters that got involved in, the, in, in, that, in that unsavoury stuff that happened um, in the train uh, when, P, when PSG was, uh, was in London. How, when you see these stories now, is it the same feeling that you get when you were talking about uh, the treatment you were getting um, whenever it was, 20 years ago, or is it a different kind of feeling, different kind of frustration when you see that kind of stuff now? It was now? upsetting um, and it was alarming because I got called right about one o'clock on that same Wednesday and it was like, Paul, it's, it's a shame um, that when you was playing this is still coming up and I didn't understand what they meant by that until I looked at that situation, looked at my two phone and looked on the telly and I, I was so upset. Mm. And the reason why I was upset because of the hard work that I've done and Chelsea have done to eradicate racism at the club, to eradicate racism where we deal with diversity at the club, it's unbelievable behind closed doors but nobody's aware of that. Mm -hmm. So an incident like that, right away, is on the top of everybody's tip, tongue and talking about because of the past of Chelsea. Mm -hmm. And trust me, how could we be looking at it when Chelsea are top of the league, and we are. <laughs> <laughs> We've won a cup, Carling Cup, and like, I had to question whether those were real, genuine Chelsea fans. Mm -hmm. And it, hurt, it really hurt, but that's not Chelsea. And the real fans of today of Chelsea no. can tell you that. That's yep. the only truth. Canners, I've got one. Uh, I just called you Canners. <laughs> <laughs> Canners, I've got. I, I, like I said, I read this book, and there is a magnificent bit about when you you played against uh, a Liverpool team that included Dalgleish, uh, Rush, Ooh. and you described Grobbler as a joke. 
<laughs> As a Liverpool supporter, I agree with you. <laughs> um, mate, what was that like? You know what? Playing at the cup is that was like I mean, you gotta understand this, right? We didn't have like 13, 14, 15 men. We just had 12 men. So me being sub and just seeing that sign and, and you know it's and everybody touched that sign and I said, yeah, fair enough, I ain't touching that. <laughs> <laughs> and going down see it, but you had to say this. The fans were the twelfth man. Yeah. Oh, they were unbelievable by that cop, trust me. But to like the playing as you mentioned, Doug Lees, even Craig Johnson. Wow. You know what I mean? I played against him, Hanson, you know about Hanson and yeah, to look back at those boys and I'm thinking, am I that old? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Kenny Douglas does look very old. <laughs> you look a lot. You look. You're aging much better than him, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Aging. I don't know. <laughs> it's good. Um, you got one more or not? You done? I'm, just... I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so in awe because I've actually got a, a Chelsea legend on the same desk. I feel so. <laughs> yeah, hey, by the way, I've lost it. You're aging better than him too. Yeah. <laughs> Paul Canneville, I just wanted to say on behalf yeah. of everyone, thank you so much yeah. for uh, being on the show. It's thank great you. that you came out to Australia. And there's so, a book, there's a su yeah. there, the subject it's of a documentary, documentary, yes. yeah. documentary called Black and, Chelsea Black yes, and Blue. It's Black and Blue is my story, Black and, and Blue. And is there a website that... Uh, there isn't at this moment, but hopefully we'll try to bring it down to Australia um, if Fox are interested. And yep. we'll hopefully, you know, let the viewers um, see my story, but hear what... Don't call me, I'll call you. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please thank Paul Canneville. This has been a production of Fox Sports.